Uh, we're starting in a few seconds. If everybody could uh, have a seat, please. So I'll introduce uh, Craig Taylor. Craig Taylor is the exploration manager for HUD Bay, and he's talking about um, a mine scale description of the mineralization at the Lawler Deposit, Snow Lake, Manitoba. Um, just give me a second so I can bring up his bio. Uh, he graduated from Queen's University with a degree in geological engineering. Um, after that, he joined Sherritt Gordon Mines as an exploration geologist and was assigned to gold projects in the Lynn Lake area of Manitoba. 1992, he joined HUD Bay working in mine geology, mine engineering, and exploration geology. Uh, in 2006, he assumed the role as senior exploration geologist for HUD Bay in the Snow Lake area. Uh, 2007, was a senior geologist in charge of the, of the project that resulted in the discovery of the Lawler. And in 2010, he became HUD Bay's exploration manager for Manitoba and Saskatchewan. All right, thanks, Peter. Uh, what I'd like to do here is uh, uh, I felt at this point we'd had uh, enough uh, detailed geology about VMS and uh, the Snow Lake camp. So what I'd like to do is basically uh, switch over and talk about the mineralization uh, at the Lawler deposit, so basically the geophysical target. So I'm going to go over the uh, large-scale setting for the mineralization as well and then uh, onto the smaller-scale detailed setting. And I also have a slide on uh, exploration to production at Lawler. So what we see here in the picture on the bottom right there is a picture of a uh, face underground. So the light colored mineral is pyrite, massive pyrite mineralization. And then the dark colored mineral, mineral is a massive spalerite mineralization. So I'll start out again with the large scale setting. So you've seen uh, this slide, or this is a portion of a slide that uh, Al uh, galley uh, had earlier and basically uh, uh, VMS deposits in the Flin Flon and Snow Lake area most of them are bimodal uh, mafic uh, setting which means uh, the predominant rock in the area is uh, mafix or basalts so you can see in the diagram on the left there um, uh, basalts in the foot wall localized rhyolite uh, associated with the massive sulfide mineralization and then additional uh, basalt on top of that. Lawler uh, also shares some characteristics that are, are more like a bimodal felsic deposit and uh, bimodal felsic deposits have a lot of pyroclastic, pyroclastic felsic rocks, uh, lower copper grade and uh, higher zinc grade and also higher gold grades. So this, this slide here, I'll use this a couple of times during the presentation and uh, basically uh, VMS deposits have three mineralization components. So a sulfide rich cap shown there with the orange color. So that's your generally pyrite rich cap with uh, zinc mineralization underneath of it, the stringer zone and then associated with the stringer zone uh, disseminated or alteration halo around the stringer zone that formed during the uh, hydrothermal fluids moving through the, the rocks here. So on these slides I've used MA to uh, denote uh, massive mineralization, ST for stringer and DI for disseminated. So as uh, has been mentioned by several people already this morning, um, um, over the 1.8 billion years since the Lawler deposit was formed, it's undergone um, quite a bit of alteration or change. Uh, it's been buried in metamorphose, so the slide on the bottom left there, the picture on the bottom left is uh, some drill core showing coarse-grained uh, garnet um, um, crystals. And many of the, uh, the minerals at Lawler have been coarsened by the metamorphism. It's also been structurally uh, modified, so rotated as shown here. And it's also been basically flattened. So here flattened out and uh, folded and faulted. So on the left of the slide, I got a, a fold arrow going around. So this is what Meg was talking about as well, uh, folding at the south end of the deposit and, and faulting through the lenses. So basically what this has done is it's taken what may have once been a fairly simple VMS deposit and rearranged the sulfide mineralization into long flat lenses. So you've seen this slide a couple of times, um, um, put together by Al Bales originally. 
And again, what, what's shown here on the bottom in the orange colors is the felsic volcanics associated with the, the, the deposit above them and the, the bluish and greenish color, oops, bluish and greenish colors through here are basalts. Uh, above that is the uh, potential thrust fault. So here you have the lower chisel rocks, the upper chisel rocks, and then rocks not related to the deposit above that. And as, as Meg pointed out, here we have the, the sulfide lens coming through and then what appears to be a folding pattern coming back and forth through the sulfide lens. So again, what started as a fairly simple sulfide-rich uh, cap on a VMS system here has been highly modified to create lenses that are, are hundreds of meters long. And this is a shot from underground of a face of massive sulfide. Again, the lighter colors pyrite and the darker colors sphalerite. And there you can see the intense folding in the, in the sulfide mineralization. So this slide here is actually a cut through the ore lenses that's been used for the uh, resource calculations at Lawler. So this is a vertical long section looking to the west. So north is on the right hand side of the slide. And on the top right corner there, there's the Lawler head frame for scale. It's actually probably a bit smaller than that, but it's close enough. So what you can see here is a, a, um, with the red, again, is the massive sulfide uh, mineralization. And you can see the, the what may have been one continuous uh, sulfide lens at one point now is multiple uh, lenses of, of massive sulfide and they are stacked basically over a 300 meter uh, uh, interval. And uh, the green lenses there represent the stringer zone type sulfide below, that originally was below the uh, massive zone. Uh, this is the same section but adding the drill holes in with uh, iron grades as uh, bar graphs or histograms along the side. And what's being shown there is uh, with with the pale green color, pale yellow color, is the disseminated mineralization that would have occurred around the alteration pipe of the VMS deposit. And when we put that into the third dimension on the, the right side, there we have a plan view of the deposit. So the red lenses representing the massive sulfide, green being the stringer zone again, and the disseminator around that. And this really gives us a, an idea of the overall scale of what the geophysical target is at Lawler. So we have a, a system where we have a, a, a series of massive sulfide lenses about 300 meters thick, an overall system at least 1,400 meters long in a north-south direction. And then we look at the width on the slide on the right there, we can see the deposits about 600 meters wide. So you're actually looking at, you know, for a VMS deposit, a, a huge system. So roughly 250 million cubic meters of, of mineralized rock in one form or another. So what I'd like to do now is switch over and actually look at some of the mineralization in detail. So again, this is the same slide again uh, that I showed earlier. And uh, there's the three styles of mineralization associated with VMS deposits occur at Lawler. Uh, you have the, the sol sulfide rich, or in Hud Bay logging terms, near solid sulfide. So that represents a zinc rich cap. Uh, underneath that, again, the stringer zone, so off, often copper gold bearing. And then the alteration horizon with the disseminated sulfides. So we'll go through each of the mineralization types. So starting with the sulfide rich, or near solid sulfide. Um, it's uh, more than 50% sulfide mineral, or 40% sulfide minerals. A large component are euhedral or subhedral grains, so 1 to 10 millimeters in diameter. So in the sample, uh, in the photograph there, you can see the, the faces on the pyrite as the, the light color, so those are 1 or 2 millimeters across. And the dominant sulfides are pyrite and sphalerite and then lesser amounts of pyrotite and calcopyrite. And then also associated with the mass of sulfide is uh, quartz, uh, carbonate, and silicate minerals. And these occur in layers 5 to 20 meters thick, thick. So you saw that in the previous slide there too with the cross section. Um, so these 
uh, five to 20 meter thick uh, massive sulfide lenses can be several hundred meters long. So when you talk about a uh, massive sulfide being mostly pyrite and uh, sphalerite, it gets people involved with EM geophysics a bit nervous. But actually the important thing with the massive sulfide mineralization at Lawler is uh, there's actually a matrix of calcopyrite and uh, pyrotite associated with the, the pyrite. So in the picture here, um, the light colored are the pyrite uh, crystals. And you can see they have uh, somewhat of a pyrite crystal shape or subhedral or euhedral shape. But what's really important at Lawler is in between those pyrite crystals, we have a matrix of calcopyrite and pyrotite. So basically, you can take a rock like we saw on this previous slide there and put an ohm meter across that and the thing is actually a, a fairly good conductor. Second mineralization type at Lawler is the stringer sulfide. So this is a picture from underground of a face. Uh, stringer sulfide is uh, basically a, a web of sulfide rich uh, veins in a barren host rock. So a host rock can be many different things. Uh, veins are typically uh, half to half a centimeter to a meter in thickness, more than 50% sulfides, and they're predominantly uh, pyrotite and calcopyrite with uh, lesser amounts of uh, sphalerite, pyrite, and galena. And these stringer zones, again, we saw that in the previous slide there, can be up to 10 meters thick and, uh, and somewhat continuous now. Um, we, we feel they're fairly continuous, but most of the information we have so far is from drill holes, so we haven't followed them underground to great extent, but we're assuming they're continuous conductive lenses. And again, here we have a photomicrograph of a stringer zone type sulfide, so here we're not seeing that euhedral uh, pyrite, um, but we can see the interconnected calcopyrite and pyrotite mineralization. So again, um, these, these uh, stringers, when you see them in drill core or in faces underground, appear to be interconnected and continuous. Third uh, mineralization type is disseminated sulfide. So here we have some drill cores showing uh, pyrite. Um, they occur in individual grains less than a millimeter to 10 millimeters across. And, uh, Predominantly pyrite, you also get pyrotite, sphalerite, calcopyrite, and galena, again, in a barren host rock. And these occur in uh, poorly defined zones 10 to, to 100 meters thick. And again, a, a photomicrograph showing the mineralization. And uh, here are the black minerals are the sulfide minerals sitting in uh, a silicate-rich matrix. And there you can see you've got uh, basically isolated pyrite and calcopyrite crystals about 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters across. So basically that's your overall, overall picture of what the Lawler mineralization package looks like. So you have the three different mineralization types forming a, a package 300 meters thick, at least 1400 meters long and 600 meters uh, wide. And I'd just like to finish up with a slide on the exploration uh, history for Lawler. So basically there was uh, about 50 years worth of historical work uh, that resulted in a geophysical survey being designed and proposed, uh, resulting in a, uh, oops, resulting in a nice magenta anomaly that uh, people like to see. Uh, drill hole, this is the actual uh, environmental picture that we take of all our drill holes, and that's the drill hole uh, dub 168, which was the discovery hole for Lawler before it was drilled. I always tell all the young geologists now to make sure they stand in their pictures when they're taking pictures of uh, <laughs> drill hole collars, because you never know which one's going to be the discovery hole. So, <laughs> Anyways, nobody wanted to stand in this one. I actually asked two people to stand in it, and they both said no. So. <laughs> Keep it in mind. Uh, 237 holes later, we had the deposit defined. Um, that, of course, goes through the economics and engineering to uh, end up with a head frame in place. Bunch of underground development, 
And then the picture on the right is uh, from the first skip of ore that made its, made its way to surface. So the end product, well, I guess really the end product is that loony sitting there as a scale on the picture. So it allows us to do some more of that historical work and uh, look for more deposits. So. Thank you. Don't be surprised if on the next presentation you see my face photoshopped in that dub one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions for Craig? Given the uh, deformation, you basically created a much larger footprint that you could see. Have you thought about if you backed all of that back up? Because you showed the theoretical cartoon a, a number of times. And you said, let's take all that rock and put it back in what we think it would have been in the first place. Well, the second question is, has all that deformation raised it reductions of that compared to some of the other less deformed deposits? Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it would make it. I, I think it would still be detectable. The same volume of sulfide would be there, perhaps not spread out quite as much. Maybe some of the geophysicists can add to that later. Uh, as far as the conductivity, uh, definitely it's coarsened the grain size up and um, so, uh, so the different sulfide minerals uh, behave differently to metamorphism. So things like pyrite uh, stay fairly fairly um, brittle and, so and solid, where the calcopyrite and pyrotite will end up forming veins. So perhaps it did make it more conductive by just changing the nature of the mi mineralization. Yeah. 